This is what China built in 43 hours. And this is what America has been planning for 20 years. One country rebuilds entire bridges faster than most nations can fix a pothole. The other spends decades debating whether to repair a single subway tunnel. Right now, while American politicians argue about infrastructure bills and environmental impact studies, China is aiming to complete a $500 billion futuristic city from scratch in seven years, while Europe celebrates opening a 300-meter subway tunnel after four years of construction. Chinese engineers are building 1,000-kilometer railways through the Himalayas at altitudes that would kill most humans. But here's what's really shocking. This isn't just about construction speed. This is about two completely different philosophies of progress. While the West debates and delays, China builds and dominates. And the results speak for themselves. Today, we're diving into the most mind-blowing infrastructure battle in human history and discovering why America might already be living in the past while China races toward the future. Let's start with the story that made Western engineers question everything they thought they knew about construction. In November 2015, Beijing had a problem. The Sanyuan Bridge, a critical transportation hub handling 200,000 vehicles daily, was literally sagging under the weight of traffic after 30 years of service. In America, this would trigger years of environmental studies, budget negotiations, and public hearings. The actual construction might take a decade. But China? They shut down the bridge at midnight on November 13th and did something that seemed impossible. In just 43 hours, less than two days, Chinese engineers completely demolished the old bridge and installed a brand new one. Not repaired, not renovated. Completely replaced with a 1,300-ton steel structure that was prefabricated off-site and moved into position with millimeter precision. The operation involved 1,500 workers operating in coordinated shifts that never stopped. They used dual navigation systems, Beidou satellites for aerial positioning and optoelectronic systems for ground alignment to achieve positioning accuracy within 9 millimeters. That's more precise than most Swiss watches. When the video went viral, foreign engineers couldn't believe what they were seeing. An American civil engineer commented, if this were in the U.S., it would take us 20 years just to get through the approval process. We can't even fix a streetlight in five months. China, you go there now. Roads, bridges, schools, you never saw anything like it. They have bridges that make the George Washington Bridge look like small potatoes. A British academic who studied the project said, China has taken parallel engineering to the extreme. Design, prefabrication, and demolition all happening simultaneously, compressing time to its physical limits. But the Sanyuan Bridge was just the beginning. It was proof of concept for what China calls China Speed, the ability to complete massive infrastructure projects in timeframes that seem impossible to Western observers. While China was rebuilding bridges in 43 hours, let's look at what America was doing with the same amount of time. Absolutely nothing. Take California's high-speed rail project, approved in 2008 with a budget of $33 billion and a promise to connect Los Angeles to San Francisco by 2020. 16 years later, not a single passenger has ridden the train. The budget has exploded to over $128 billion, and the completion date has been pushed to sometime in the 2030s, if it ever gets finished at all. Meanwhile, since 2008, China has built over 40,000 kilometers of high-speed rail. That's enough track to circle the Earth at the equator. Their trains routinely operate at 350 kilometers per hour, and they've achieved test speeds of 421 kilometers per hour. The Beijing-Shanghai line, completed in just four years, carries more passengers annually than the entire U.S. Amtrak system. The contrast is humiliating. America's fastest train, the Acela, reaches 150 miles per hour for only a few minutes on a short stretch of track. Most of the time, it crawls at speeds barely faster than cars on the highway, sharing century-old tracks with freight trains. But it gets worse. According to the American Society of Civil Engineers, 42% of America's bridges are over 50 years old and structurally deficient. The country needs $2.6 trillion in infrastructure investment just to bring existing systems up to acceptable standards. Meanwhile, China is building infrastructure that doesn't just meet current needs, it anticipates future demands. Their new airports, 
like Beijing Daxing, can handle 100 million passengers annually through terminals so advanced they use AI to manage everything from baggage handling to air traffic control. China isn't just building faster, they're building things the rest of the world said were impossible. The Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge spans 55 kilometers across the Pearl River Delta, making it the longest sea crossing bridge in the world. But calling it just a bridge understates its complexity. It's an integrated system of bridges, tunnels, and artificial islands that required engineering solutions no country had ever attempted. The underwater sections allow massive ships to pass overhead while maintaining vehicle traffic flow. Chinese engineers literally built artificial islands in the middle of the ocean to house tunnel entrances, using techniques that involved creating land where none existed before. The bridge withstands typhoons with wind speeds exceeding 200 miles per hour, earthquakes up to magnitude 8.0, and ship collisions from vessels weighing over 300,000 tons. Its design life exceeds 120 years through materials and construction techniques that surpass international standards by margins that impressed even skeptical Western engineers. Construction required coordination between three separate governments, Hong Kong, mainland China, and Macau, with different legal systems, currencies, and regulatory requirements. Yet the project completed on schedule through diplomatic and engineering cooperation that most international projects never achieve. When European executives flew to China to witness the bridge's opening, they admitted they were seeing infrastructure their countries couldn't replicate. A German engineer said, this isn't just about money or manpower. This represents organizational capabilities that democratic governments simply cannot match. But if the sea crossing bridge impressed Western engineers, China's next project left them speechless. The Qinghai Tibet Railway accomplished what they had declared impossible, building a functioning railroad across the highest plateau on Earth. The track climbs to 5,072 meters above sea level, higher than most mountains in Europe, while crossing permafrost that shifts unpredictably and terrain where oxygen levels drop to barely sustainable levels. Workers had to operate in conditions that would kill unprotected humans in minutes. Chinese engineers solved problems that don't exist anywhere else on Earth. How do you lay tracks on permafrost that melts and refreezes? They invented thermosiphons, passive cooling systems that prevent ground melting without requiring external power, maintaining stability across hundreds of kilometers. How do you keep passengers alive at altitudes where most people would lose consciousness? The trains use pressurized cabins like aircraft with oxygen systems that maintain breathable atmosphere throughout the journey. The railway's completion connected Tibet to China's main transportation network for the first time in history, reducing travel time from days to hours while maintaining passenger safety standards that exceed international aviation requirements. Western transportation officials who studied the project admitted it represented engineering capabilities their countries simply didn't possess. The coordination required between government agencies, military logistics, and private contractors was something democratic systems couldn't replicate. While America struggles to repair existing infrastructure, China is building entirely new cities that look like they're from the future. Xiong'an New Area, a $95 billion smart city project, rose from empty farmland to a functioning metropolis in just seven years. This isn't just urban planning, it's urban engineering on a scale never attempted before. The city features digital roads that collect real-time traffic data and automatically calculate optimal emergency routes. When a fire truck needs to reach a scene, every traffic light along its path turns green automatically. Underground, there's a complete transportation and utility system integrated with subways, high-speed rail, water systems, power grids, and 5G networks all functioning as one ecosystem. Above ground, the city emphasizes nature and open green spaces while maintaining population density that would be impossible with traditional urban design. The construction employed over 40,000 workers operating in coordinated shifts that never stopped. Concrete was poured continuously for months to create foundations capable of supporting structures weighing millions of tons. Compare this to America's smart city initiatives, which mostly involve adding sensors to existing infrastructure and calling it innovation. China built an entire intelligent city from scratch, while America is still trying to figure out how to add Wi-Fi to subway stations. China's South to North Water Diversion Project represents the largest water engineering project in human history. 
The system moves water across distances equivalent to transcontinental shipping, over 2,800 kilometers, while maintaining quality standards that exceed natural river systems. The project consists of three separate canal systems transferring 44.8 billion cubic meters of water annually from southern China to arid northern regions. That's enough water to supply major cities while supporting agricultural expansion in regions that were previously desert. The engineering challenges involved building aqueducts across mountain ranges, under existing rivers, and through urban areas without disrupting existing infrastructure. Construction required tunneling through rock formations using techniques adapted from subway construction while maintaining water flow across thousands of kilometers. The project's completion transformed agricultural capacity in northern China, supporting crop production that feeds hundreds of millions of people while reducing dependence on increasingly unreliable rainfall patterns. Meanwhile, America can't even maintain its existing water infrastructure. The American Water Works Association estimates that the U.S. needs $1 trillion in water infrastructure investment over the next 25 years just to maintain current service levels. China's space program demonstrates the same approach they use for terrestrial infrastructure. Ambitious goals, rapid execution, and results that shock international observers. The Tianwen Mars mission successfully landed a rover on Mars while establishing orbital operations, making China only the second nation to achieve controlled Mars landings. Their Tiangong space station supports experiments in zero gravity that produce materials impossible to create under terrestrial conditions. But China's real achievement is technological independence. They developed life support systems, navigation technology, and propulsion methods that operate reliably without depending on international cooperation or shared technologies. Their lunar sample return missions acquired materials that provide insights into solar system formation while demonstrating robotic systems capable of operating autonomously across interplanetary distances. Compare this to America's space program, which relies heavily on private contractors and international partnerships. NASA's Artemis program to return to the moon has been delayed multiple times and faces budget constraints that threaten its viability. The secret behind China's infrastructure dominance isn't just government planning, it's the massive, highly skilled workforce they've mobilized for construction. At Sani Heavy Industry, one of China's largest construction equipment manufacturers, over 65,000 workers operate in facilities that employ more robots than humans. The company produces the machines that build China's mega-projects. Cranes capable of lifting 3,600 tons, tunnel boring machines that can excavate through any terrain, and concrete pumps that set world records. Chinese construction crews work in coordinated shifts that operate 24-7. When they built the Huoshenshan Hospital during COVID-19, over 7,000 skilled workers operated around the clock to complete a 1,000-bed facility in just 10 days. The precision required for these projects is extraordinary. When installing the steel structure for Shanghai Tower, workers had to position components with millimeter accuracy at heights exceeding 600 meters. The margin for error was zero. Any mistake could compromise the entire structure. American construction, by comparison, operates on completely different principles. Union rules limit working hours, environmental regulations, slow progress, and safety requirements, while important, add months or years to project timelines. China's infrastructure projects aren't just bigger and faster, they're smarter. Beijing Daxing International Airport uses artificial intelligence to manage everything from baggage handling to air traffic control, creating efficiency levels that make traditional airports look primitive. The terminal's starfish-shaped design minimizes walking distances while maximizing natural light, reducing energy consumption by 40% compared to conventional airports. Underground, automated trains connect terminals faster than most cities' subway systems. The airport's facial recognition technology processes passengers without documents, while automated systems track luggage with 99.9% .9 accuracy through RFID chips and real-time monitoring. Meanwhile, American airports still rely on systems designed decades ago. Passengers wait in long security lines, baggage handling is largely manual, and flight delays are routine due to outdated air traffic control systems. China's infrastructure boom isn't just about impressive engineering, it's about economic strategy. Every major project is designed to stimulate economic growth, create jobs, 
and position China for future competitiveness. The Belt and Road Initiative, spanning over 70 countries, isn't just the largest infrastructure project in human history. It's economic engineering that creates trade relationships favoring Chinese interests. Ports built through BRI financing use Chinese equipment, operated by Chinese companies, and financed through terms that provide China with operational control. Railway connections from China to Europe reduce shipping times from weeks to days while creating overland trade routes that bypass traditional maritime choke points controlled by Western navies. The economic impact is staggering. China's infrastructure investment since 2021 has topped $1.3 trillion, creating millions of jobs while building the foundation for future economic growth. America's infrastructure spending, by comparison, is fragmented across thousands of local projects with no coordinated national strategy. The result is a patchwork of repairs and upgrades that don't create the network effects necessary for economic transformation. Here's the uncomfortable truth. Western politicians don't want to admit democratic systems might be fundamentally incompatible with the kind of rapid infrastructure development China achieves. In America, major infrastructure projects require environmental impact studies, public hearings, legislative approval, and judicial review. Each step can take years, and any organized opposition can delay or kill projects entirely. California's high-speed rail project has faced over 1,000 lawsuits since its approval. Every environmental group, property owner, and political opponent has multiple opportunities to slow or stop progress. China's system eliminates these bottlenecks through centralized decision-making and unified execution. When the government decides to build something, it gets built. Property owners are compensated and relocated. Environmental concerns are addressed through engineering solutions rather than endless studies. The trade-offs are obvious. Democratic systems provide more individual rights and environmental protections. But they also make rapid infrastructure development nearly impossible. While America debates infrastructure bills and argues about funding, China is already building the infrastructure of 2050. Their high-speed rail network will exceed 70,000 kilometers by 2035, connecting every major city in the country. Their smart cities integrate AI, renewable energy, and advanced transportation systems that most Western cities can't even imagine. China's digital currency and social credit systems create financial infrastructure that operates at speeds and scales impossible with traditional banking. Their 5G networks provide connectivity that enables applications like autonomous vehicles and remote surgery. Meanwhile, America is still trying to repair infrastructure built in the 1950s. The country that once led the world in engineering and construction now struggles to maintain systems designed by previous generations. So who's winning this infrastructure battle? The answer isn't even close. China has built more infrastructure in the past 20 years than America built in the previous 100. Their projects aren't just bigger and faster. They're more advanced, more integrated, and more forward-thinking than anything the West has attempted. The numbers are staggering. China has built over 40,000 kilometers of high-speed rail, while America has built zero. They've constructed hundreds of airports, thousands of bridges, and entire cities, while America struggles to repair existing infrastructure. But the real difference isn't just about construction, it's about vision and execution. China sees infrastructure as the foundation of national power and economic competitiveness. America sees it as an expense to be minimized and delayed. The result is a country that's building the future, while its competitors remain trapped in the past. China's infrastructure doesn't just serve current needs, it anticipates and enables future growth in ways that give them insurmountable advantages. American politicians can debate and delay all they want. But while they're talking, China is building. And in the infrastructure race, second place might as well be last place. The age of American infrastructure dominance is over. The age of Chinese engineering supremacy has begun, and the gap is only getting wider every day. Whether America can catch up remains to be seen. But one thing is certain. China isn't slowing down to wait for anyone. They're building the future, one impossible project at a time. Thanks for watching, and make sure to check out the videos on your screen for more insights into the forces reshaping our world.